Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial series. We, uh, we're driving through a town and I actually think we're going to take a break here. Um, so basically we drove up this road by accident and found a very large building that's blocking the road. I want to, I want to, I want to see what that is. And I think I know what that is, but I want to at least check. And how do we do this safely? Well, there is uh, two roads that connect to this building. Uh, oh, and the reason we're doing this is because we got a printed message about an NPC. So we scroll up probably quite a ways ago. Uh, Lyle Darn is something over there. No, we had... Mm, it's probably at the bottom and I missed it. <sighs> Lyle Darden, you're so... You're terrible. Okay. Close this. Open it. Check the bottom. Lyle Darden, Lyle Darden, Lyle Darden. Short hair cat. Okay. Well. Yeah, it might have been pushed out of our log since we were hitting so many enemies. Um, but basically, I thought we got... Didn't we get... Didn't we get a printout about another NPC? Pretty sure we did. And what that leads me to believe is that either they're in this area, which seems not super likely, or they're in this building, which is attached to this, and we just got a printout, even though we couldn't see the NPC. Either way, we want to go over there and check out this building. The problem is, whenever you go through a town and you need to park, you don't just leave your vehicle in the middle of the road. Because it's inevitably going to lead to zombies hearing the vehicle as it was idling and whatnot and coming to smash it. So I think we're going to drive and see if we can park behind this house to get a little bit of cover. So let's slow down, make a U-turn, and uh, drive back here. See if we can find a nice place to park that's a little further away from the zombies. There's a little fishing pond over here. We're just going to park it back here. And, uh, yeah, it, the goal is just to get far enough away. What is this? Fishing pond. Yeah, but what is... What, did, what am I seeing on my mini-map? Oh, it's just the road. It looks weird on this mini-map with the grayed out. Okay. Um, so let's just park our vehicle. Turn off the headlights. Stop driving. Zoom in. Do we still have our spear? We do. Wield the spear. And uh, this is one of the... So we talked a lot about... Um, having our, uh, how the guns impact, uh, how the guns change the gameplay and how once you have a gun, it's pretty easy to kind of clear areas and just shoot a lot. And that's all true. Um, however, in certain circumstances, like here, we're on the edge of two cities. We really don't want to be popping off shots while we have never cleared any of this area because if we start shooting zombies it's gonna draw enemies from all around us which there could be quite a lot and we did see a shocker up here who is pretty dangerous um, what time of day is it it's midnight so we have time to explore without being exposed in the daylight but we have to make sure Lyle Darden isn't shooting so let's talk to him basic commands engagement rules uh, I thought this would say about, never mind, uh, don't use ranged weapons anymore. Not use grenades, will avoid shooting if allies are in the line of fire, will not use ranged weapons. Okay, so never mind, so now you should be using that baseball bat we gave you. He's not holding anything, he's holding his gun. How do we make him use talk? Not yet. I want you to use this item. We can't make him use an item from his own inventory. I wish this was a little bit more intuitive. Like I really feel like there should be a button right on this screen that says, let's talk about your equipment or whatever, and you can forcibly get them to equip things. Because I, the only way we found to make him use something is to hold on to, is to, I want you to use this item. But that requires me to have the inventory, the item in my inventory. And currently he has the nail bat in his inventory. Whatever. Uh, he will surely help us in combat, at least somewhat. 
We're going to hang around the vehicle for a little bit and see if any zombies come from having heard it drive back here. doesn't look like any of them care. We do also leave a scent trail, although it's not very strong uh, when you're in the confines of a vehicle. So we're going to head over here. Shocker zombie, yeah. So shocker zombies we have not touched on, I don't think. Basically, a shocker zombie is an upgraded form of the zapper zombie that we've seen. If you hit them with a metal weapon, you will be shocked in melee. Um, similarly, if you're wearing have a wood weapon, it will not shock you. If you have non-conductive gloves on, it will prevent you from being shocked. But that's a possibility. But you really don't want to engage a shocker in melee anyway. Shockers are illuminated at night, which is why we can see him even though he's in a dark tile. He produces a small amount of light. Um, so they're very easy to shoot during the nighttime because they you can see them and they can't see you. Um, and then, of course, they give CBMs when dissected, so they're a valuable target if you're CBM hunting, which I would say we are, but I am in, a, in an unfamiliar area and don't want to start just popping off shots. We may do this. We may deal with him, but I'm, I'm not sure at the moment. Um, and then their ranged attack, which we didn't talk about, they will zap electricity in a direction. It will create kind of an AOE electrical discharge thing the electricity that it produces one can move i believe slightly so if you're in a safe tile it's possible for some of the electricity to jump into your tile two it leaves gaps um, so there are safe places within the cloud of electricity although again it can migrate and then it dissipates relatively quickly so if you stand around for three or four turns it will go away i have absolutely no idea what their recharge time is they can definitely zap more than once, um, but I'm not sure how long it takes to, to get that cooldown back. But they're very dangerous. Really, you should only fight them at night when you can see them and they can't see you. In fact, that is a good rule of thumb for basically all of the Shocker Zombies except for the Zapper Zombie, which does not have an electric discharge attack. So, uh, And we've meleeed Zapper Zombies at this point of the game because they're pretty weak and pathetic. So we're back to melee um, because in this situation, it's more beneficial for us to do melee. Uh, moving into the forest will also help insulate us from exposure. And we're just looking to get over to see what this building is. Um, we'll grab some fruit on the way. I love peaches. Peaches and plums are the best fruits, no matter what anyone says. I also like papaya, uh, although in America, it's hard to find papaya. So this is where we got the NPC message. And I was hoping if we popped out, we might just see him somewhere, but that seems unlikely. So we'll just uh, navigate around. Ooh, soldier ant. <sighs> Gotta hate ants. Uh, so in Cataclysm, there are lots of mutant creatures. Obviously, we've seen some throughout the course of the playthrough. This is an, a mutated ant. It's very big. It's a huge and hairy ant, almost twice the size of other giant ants. Bulging pincers extend from its jaws. We're going to back up and leave him here. So come on, Lyle. Um, ants, there are two main flavors of ants. Yeah, this is this is the hub. So we'll talk about that when we get to the door. Um, two types of ants, primarily. There are the sulfuric ants, which are, or I'm sorry, as, acidic ants. I think they're in the files referred to as sulfuric ants. But they're acidic ants. They produce acid, the acid barf type attack that we've talked about many times. Um, and those are extremely dangerous. I would recommend if you ever encounter an area where there are acid ants that you just leave and never come back. Um, there's absolutely no upside whatsoever to fighting them. They, prov In my opinion, they contribute very little to the actual game of Cataclysm because the numbers that they generate are absurd, like literally 300-ish ants around an anthill, um, if not way more than that. Uh, and it just absolutely, if you're on an old computer, one, they slow down the game a lot. Uh, so if you have some like uh, an old CPU or you're using like an integrated, like an old laptop, they're going to slow down your game considerably because it's the game is calculating movements for all of these enemies. This acid ants provide no upside really whatsoever. I mean, ants give chitin, I believe, but that's the only thing that you can say is good. In the old days, they would provide lots of meat, so you could, you know, harvest ants pretty infinitely for meat. Um, but that's not something I would recommend. Um, they spawn around an anthill, so probably around here somewhere is an anthill. Um, and then the other type of ants are just these regular kind of giant ants. They're considerably less annoying because they don't have the acid attacks. Um, but again, there's no upside to fighting them, so... 
Uh, the only real benefit is that they will fight the the zombies. Will uh, oftentimes they'll end up attacking each other, kind of like the giant wasps. They're scary on their own, um, but if you can get them in a group with other zombies, they'll end up clearing out a lot of the enemies for you. Um, acid ants, in particular, are very good at murdering zombies. Getting a lot of fruit trees, of course, because it's summertime. We uh, why don't we eat some fruit just for fun? Man, I love plums. Uh, there's just something about the kind of bitterness that their skin has combined with the sweetness of their flesh. I love, I love me a plum. Okay. Oh, uh, looks like this did not generate properly. So that's exciting. So there may just be loose. Yeah. So what I'm guessing happened here, and this happens a lot in Cataclysm, whenever there's an anthill, anthills will often circumvent normal map generation. So what has likely happened here is that part of the anthill has overlapped with the hub spawn um, which means there are, one there's going to be ants here but two it destroyed some of the building and it didn't spawn properly this is uh an issue for a couple reasons one because i wanted to talk about the hub and uh whatnot which we can still do but two because there are npcs in the hub that i believe are hostile if you enter their private area so because the walls have not generated i don't know what is private area and i don't want them to become hostile just save uh, because they have guns frankly is what it comes down to and they can probably murder us if they want to looks like part of it generated uh, let's head to the front door so if you ever discover the hub and there's a pretty good chance you will this is hub 01 um, this is a NPC location it has quests so I don't want to give like super spoilers but this is a location it, I mean honestly I don't consider this a spoiler because it's like one of two locations in the game that spawns NPCs uh, reliably. And then also the spawn rate of the Hub 01 has been in really increased over the last uh, like six months. It got a real bump to its spawn rate because they were trying to play test the new quests and things. So they wanted more players to bump into it so they could give feedback. So I want to say this again since we're touching on it. Part of playing experimental version of Cataclysm is making bug reports. Part of uh, our job as the player is to play test the new changes that come to the game, make bug reports, test new features, things like that, so that they get feedback and they can make the game better. So, you know, do that. Uh, if you encounter bugs, go ahead and report them. If you're play testing and you find a broken quest or a broken NPC, report that, talk to them about it because that makes a better game. So that's why Hub01 spawns so much. So it's not very spoilery because you're going to encounter it pretty regularly. I think I've seen it in every one of my last like four playthroughs. Um, yeah, so it is an NPC location. So there are NPCs here. Um, I don't believe they're recruitable. I believe that they are part of a faction, this Hub faction. And then the Hub has some quests. So we're going to go inside. Hopefully they're not hostile. Um, we're seeing ants. We would really like to just avoid the ants. They're everywhere. Um, so we've already seen, what, three or four? I don't think they're... I think giant ants are not hostile, but I think the soldier ants are. Enormous red ant covered in chitinous plates. Okay. So let's just head into hub. Okay, maybe it was just the parking structure that was busted. Because this looks fine. Uh, and this is what it looks like on the inside. Nice little lit area. Uh, what, no, don't talk to Lyle Darden. There are some books over here. Um, if you're looking to loot some books, these are basically free books that you can take. Um, does it say that it's owned by the hub? So basically, if you're ever in an NPC settlement and you try to pick stuff up, there will be a little red exclamation point that tells you this would be stealing. So they have electronic circuit theory. We'll take. We'll just take all the books. Who cares? Um, but it's not stealing because it would tell us if it were stealing. It would have a little red exclamation point. So if you ever see that and you wonder what that means on an item it means you're stealing it so the items out here are free and then we have this here it's an intercom and a card reader this is like the sealed off area that leads to the npc settlement so if we interact with the intercom we bring up dialogue and this is this is basically where i'm going to leave it i'm not going to go into detail about the quests or anything like that i believe at this point it has three quests available to it there was a third one added right before the feature freeze for 0.E. E. So that should be in the game as far as I know. So there are three quests that are currently doable in our, oh, I wanna say Firefighter series, no. 
in one of our series, we did the first one, we got the second quest, and it never followed through. At that point, there wasn't a third quest, so I'm not sure what all they are. The rewards, in my opinion, are not very valuable. There is uh, one cool item that is added um, that is specific to Hub 01 that you can get uh, that I can think of. So, like, it, it's just not super valuable, uh, in my opinion. Um, but there is quests that you can do and... More importantly, you can trade with these people. So if you do some quests, you can trade with them. To my understanding, they have valuables that restock more frequently than any other location in the game. So if you're trying to do like a trading playthrough or maybe you're trying to secure... I don't want to get spoilery, but these guys have a particular like type of item um, that is more valuable, you know, a little bit more advanced, let's say. Um, they have a focus on some more advanced things. So if you want to trade... You can trade with these people. Uh, we have terrible barter and persuasion and all that stuff. So I'm just going to leave. But I wanted to talk about it because it's a quest location. So they said goodbye. So basically locked in here is an NPC faction. Um, as far as I know, none of them are recruitable. So there's nothing we can do to get them to join our side. And then last time I was here, I'll be honest, there was a tank out here. I don't know if that spawns right... Oh, no, they were removed from the game. Never mind. Uh, so, oh, yeah. So this is all broken. This isn't supposed to be grass, I don't think. So, can we come in from the rear? We can't. It's still sealed up. Maybe it's just grass in the compound? I really thought this was all building, though. I didn't know they had a big grass surrounding thing. Lyle, can you climb fences? Kind of? Okay. I heard footsteps. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to leave. There's no reason for us to be here. Don't mind the ants, Lyle. We'll just pop outside. Yeah, last time I was here, there was a tank up here. I believe that particular tank has been removed from the game. Um, but I don't know if that was a random spawn or something that was purposely there every time. So just be aware of that. That's a uh, soldier ant. <sighs> Let's just fight it. Come on, Lyle. Lyle, why are you not helping me? I don't know why he didn't help me. Okay. Um, rattlesnake. Just stay away from the snake, Lyle. So Lyle seems like garbage. I'm not sure why he's not. Uh, he should have at least tried to melee that enemy. Look out for that shocker zombie, he says. Be quiet, Lyle. We're sneaking. Um, so before we move on, do we want to kill the shocker? We don't have very many CBMs. We definitely would like some more CBMs. If I were doing this casually, I for sure would. Let's put Lyle in the car and tell him to stay there. And we'll go out and kill... See, but if, even if we kill the Shocker, I was thinking we could just bring its body with us and deal with it later. But, like, it's way up there. So killing it, getting it to the car before more zombies show up is, like, just not going to happen. Nah, it's smarter not to take this play. I should be more cautious in this game. I have not been cautious. Let's go in this way. That way Lyle Darden uh, will get in the seat without opening his passenger door. Um... Yeah, it's, I would like to kill the Shocker, but it's smarter to, like, once we get established in an area and we start pushing into town, we're going to see Shockers, and we'll just kill those, because that way, like, let's say we set up base right here, which we're not going to do, and we start clearing the surrounding area, and we push into town and we see, like, a horde, and, oh, there's a Shocker zombie or two or whatever, we can kill them, and, like, we know it's reasonably safe because we've already cleared a big section behind us. So the only zombies we have to worry about are ones that would come from a few other directions. So it's a little more than just driving into a town we've never been into, popping off a few shots and having zombies come from literally every direction to kill us. So just smarter not to do that. So I think we'll push up to this bridge just to see if it is landmined. Um, I kind of think it's going to be. And then I think we're going to settle like just over here. Um, if this is like a farmhouse, maybe we'll set up on a farm or something. But, uh, yeah, because this, I mean, at least there's a little town here. I mean, it's going to be just houses, but, uh, what's even up? I mean, it connects to some other things if we want to go that direction. Whatever. It doesn't matter. None of this matters. Internet life is meaningless. Let's, uh, let's head north. Go ahead and save again. Pop on the old headlights. And just head out. Oh, turning that light on revealed a lot of enemies. But we don't really care about that. 
The shocker can be problematic while you're driving um, because I believe the electricity can hit you while you're driving. So uh, I'm not super thrilled about going near him. Hello, zombie. Can we squeeze through here? We kind of can. The zombie is not cooperating. Get over. Oh, we hit it. Okay, back it up. Back it up. Shouldn't have tried. Should have just plowed through the dang old zombies. No, no, no. Forward, please. Nope, that's uh, too zoomed. Let's back off here. See what the shocker does? He did not shock at us. I thought they could shock through the windshield. That m Are we fighting? There's a riot control platform. Uh, okay, so this is the non... The less than lethal turret. Widely publicized, blah, blah, blah. Hits against the target's limbs. Quickly adopted. Non, they're less lethal. Yeah. So this guy, if we were out of our vehicle, would stun us by shooting us. They're most likely going to be distracted by the zombies. But the smart thing to do here is to actually go around and not do this. So, because last we checked, remember we had this happen in our playthrough. Uh, in this playthrough, we checked and they were like, they stun you, but not while you're driving. But for all I know, that's changed. So we really don't want, got to swing wide here or we'll clip this bus. I really don't want to get stunned while driving and find out that I was wrong. Looks like a bunch of little baby chicks have hatched here. Oh, that snake's going to eat those babies. Uh, so let's uh, just head north this way. Instead of, uh, instead of dealing with those turrets. And really, we can just shoot pretty far north here as long as the road is somewhat clear. We don't really care about... Oh, no. <laughs> don't really care about hitting zombies, but we do care about hitting vehicles. So we should be able to just knock this mirror off and keep driving. Colliding with vehicles will do significant damage to your car. That's something that you definitely should avoid doing. If you hit another vehicle, it will bounce the vehicle. So like uh, you may have noticed when we hit that mirror it actually pushed this vehicle back slightly um, so you can push vehicles out of the way using your vehicle generally would not recommend impacting with them i guess you could probably pull up to the front of one and then just put on the gas and slowly push it i've never really done that before um, and to my understanding tow cables were either added to the game or are soon going to be added to the game which should give you some ability to do that I know towing is something that uh, they've talked about off and on for many years, um, or at least for the last like year and a half, I've seen people discuss it on a pretty regular basis. Um, but as far as I know, that was never, we're going to hit that, uh, never fully implemented. Oh, hello, grappler, uh, or rather wrestler zombie, excuse me. Actually, what are you called? Uh, where, Kev oh, it's a Kevlar zombie. Sorry, I thought that was the stretchy. Never mind, there's another zombie. We'll talk about it when we see it. Um, so this is a Kevlar zombie. We talked about this uh, in the lab. They upgrade from soldier zombies. They have a lot of armor. And uh, yeah, I mean, they have soldier zombie loot on them. So if you're looking for a 223 rifle or MREs or whatever, they're a good target. Otherwise, they're a little, little tough. Um, these guys aren't super, super tough. We could kill them with a gun pretty not super difficult. Um, but they do upgrade into scarier versions of the Kevlar zombie. And that, uh, that creature can be quite difficult uh, if you're not prepared for it. So, yeah, I mean, I would kill them if I was, uh, like, living in this area. I would prioritize killing him so he can't upgrade. But I don't think that that's actually a priority for us here. Should have gone one more road over. It's too late. I was going to say, so it's better to approach this bridge from the south. That way, if uh, it's a minefield, we can just pivot. If we come at it from this direction... Uh, and there's a minefield. We actually have to U-turn, and that will mean we have to hit all the zombies that are following us, which is uh, a little bit more dangerous, because if we just came up here and pivoted, yeah, there are zombies here, but they're not, like, in our wake, gathering up in big clumps. But it's fine. It's just uh, not... Yeah. Clip the, clip the vehicle. It's not optimal, is my point. I'm getting a little thrown, because this red dot is actually in line with our vehicle driver's seat, I'm used to it being in the center of the vehicle. I don't know if that's changed or a bug or if I just never noticed it, but I keep thinking that this position means we're moving left 
because I'm used to it being in the precise center of the vehicle. So that's throwing me a little bit here as I'm driving. Limo, we talked about them. They have rechargers in them, which is a good thing. The road to the north here is extremely blocked, so we won't be going that way. Uh, let's see if we can get over to this bridge and see what we're looking at. Uh, is this the bridge? One more road over. Actually, not a lot of zombies here, so we might not end up with so many in our wake. And yeah, the bridge is actually clear. Now, this is a bit unfortunate because it feels cheatery uh, since we were here before and we saw the minefield to come back and have it actually be clear and allow us to, to cross through feels bad because it's like we should have pivoted to show you what you would do if you discovered that. You know, you would obviously choose a different location to set up your base. Since it's clear, we're just going to move up here and do it. Um, because I really would like to be between these two large cities. But, yeah. I mean, assuming that the other side of this bridge is clear. I do want to take a moment and talk about bridges. Um, bridges are one of the worst bottlenecks in Cataclysm. Uh, a lot of times you will find wreckage on the bridge, which will prevent you from being able to drive through. So let's say... I mean, we've seen it. We just saw it in this road over here. Does It, it does say vehicles. So let's look at this wreckage. So here you'll see there's quite a large wreck. It appears to contain no less than like six vehicles, uh, which is obviously not really what it is. It's just that the sprites display all these headlights, so it looks like a lot of vehicles. But you can figure this is the size of uh, maybe four or five vehicles. And this is probably about the biggest wreckage you'll, you're going to see. This is pretty large for wreckage. Usually it's about the size of one vehicle. Sometimes it's about the size of two. This is enormous. This may even be two separate wrecks that just spawn next to each other. But you'll see it encompasses almost the entire road um, and would be very difficult to navigate around. In this situation, we have trees over here we can't drive through. We probably can squeeze right through here, um, but you don't always have that necessarily as an option. Um, for all we know, we get up here and there's a bunch of... Uh, I mean, I don't know what would stop us. We could pull through here. But if you look at the bridge, you'll see it's roughly the width of the road. So if we encountered that particular wreckage on this road, that's it. We can't go across this bridge because there's no way for us to navigate around it. This is one of the reasons why many like players who play a, like a huge nomadic game, they will make um, water safe vehicles. Um, vehicles that can also float, not just drive on land, but also float so that they can just pull up to an area like this because a lot of these bridges have pretty open um, side areas. A lot of times it'll be like this kind of beachhead type area and they'll just drive and then boat through the river because there's no obstacles. Currently in the game, there's no water content really. So like there's very few boats in the game. Uh, there was a marina added, and they have a couple boats, but that's literally the only place I can think of boats. There's no randomly generated boats on, on waterways. Um, there's no, like, submarines or underwater content. There's no, um, like, there's a few islands, but there aren't as many as you probably would expect to have. Most of them are empty and don't have cool stuff on them. The waterways are a relatively recent addition. I want to say Rao, I want to say Gorgon is the name of the individual who did all the water work. It looks great, by the way. If you have not played Cataclysm prior to this, back in the day, rivers are more or less untouched in a lot of regards. You'll see the same style of river. Uh, if we look at our map, um, rivers used to be like this, where they're just wide, you know, a handful of five or six tile wide, whatever. But we also have lakes, we have ponds, we have um, the shorelines has been reworked. The natural, the way that they appear in the game looks much more natural and satisfying now. Waterways got a huge facelift like maybe about a year ago. And I think and it looks fantastic and I love it. Um, but we're still kind of catching up with water content. Not a lot of boats have been added to the game. Um, I would really like to see big boats like cruise ship locations kind of added as a fun location to loot. It's just with the way vehicles are set up right now, you can't have Z-level vehicles, so it would have to be a stationary location. You don't care. Anyway, waterways and such do not have a lot of content, so it's relatively easy to just drive through them without really interacting with anything other than some birds. So a lot of people will do aquatic stuff. There's another reason why people push for towing is because if we have the ability to haul wrecks out of the road, that would f facilitate us being able to travel through bridges more safely. So I just wanted to touch on bridges because they are a pretty significant. See there our back end tried to kick out and we hit that uh, V2 
vehicle and we actually have a barricade on the other side of the bridge so yeah that's a minefield so this is not accessible we're gonna have to go back the way we came i am going to stop because i see stanag mags uh and i would like to have those so we're gonna pop out and grab these extra magazines they're empty but it doesn't matter we could try just going through uh i would not recommend you ever do something like that so this makes the uh, bridge inaccessible, as we discussed previously. Um, yeah, so all the wreckage stuff aside, there are also minefields that spawn pretty regularly these days. On bridges, I believe there was an issue where they were not spawning, and so that was recently fixed. So nowadays you will find minefields. Now I'm going to assume that the minefield is after the fence. So I'm going to... You spotted a landmine. Yeah, okay. So we can talk about landmines as well. Um, sorry, it's going to be a longer episode. So we should, I can't move. Oh, there we go. Oh, you can't move through sandbags. I see, okay. We should be able to safely walk up here and grab these. Uh, three, that's a pistol I don't really want. Is it a pistol? I believe it is. Let me scroll down. Caltech P3AT magazine. I'm gonna say Pete. It's Pete, like a bog. Standard six, I mean, it's a six round. It's gotta be a pistol. Uh, so we'll grab that. Uh, I do like motorcycle helmets and motorcycle armor, but we're kind of past all that. Some Heelys. Uh, and we'll take the cough syrup. Yeah, so minefields previously would spawn in pretty much random locations, and they were in the ground. So mines were very difficult to spot. because, Well, actually, they were very easy because they would put a mound of dirt over top of them, and it was pretty easy to locate where the mines were. But then that was changed to make them a little harder to see, so they were basically invisible if they were underground. But if they spawn on a road, they're on top. Obviously, they're not buried in the asphalt. So they're much easier to spot. Now, if you were braver than me, in fact, we'll do this. Why not? We're at the end of the episode. Let's save. I'm going to go play with a landmine. Would not recommend. Uh, we'll smash the barbed wire here. Uh, we can probably hoof it through here pretty safely because we will detect a lot of these mines. We have a decent perception uh oh just not really it's an okay perception lyle you should not have followed me because i don't trust you um but if we examine a landmine it will give us the opportunity to disarm them now i do want to point out our trapping skill is currently zero so we're probably going to blow ourselves up but one option if you're a very advanced survivor uh and a lot of people used to do this i don't know if people still do this is to harvest landmines and it blew up and we died um, and normally, when you harvest them, you can get, I believe, black powder out of them. So that's something people will do a lot of. It's weird we didn't really see the explosion, um, but we did die, which is exactly what I expected to happen at a zero trapping skill. You'll see it fully destroyed our torso, our arm, and hurt our leg. Pretty interesting, actually, that the uh, ESAPI vest did not stop the majority of this. I really would have thought that that would have cut down the number of bomb fragments entering our torso. I mean, I totally expected to die, but like, whatever. Anyway, that's going to do it. Um, so for this episode, we're going to end up turning around and we're going to find a new place to put our base. But I wanted to check it out. I wanted to show you uh, the area. So, And there was a lot to talk about with bridges and things. So for now, it's going to do it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with more tutorial content in the near future. I'll see you next time.